Alright guys, welcome back to your 21st tutorial and in this lesson I'm going to be talking about a couple more things starting with a text shadow. So as you can see we can apply a shadow to our div box, however if we added the same property to the text it wouldn't work. That's because this property is for boxes only. Sounds gross, but I know. So what we need to do in order to achieve a text shadow is actually do this. We don't use the WebKit at all. I don't know if this is a standard yet. I didn't think it was, but whenever I uh, was playing with this, like, I don't know, I was making my website like three weeks ago, I found out that you just use text shadow without the WebKit box and uh, just put your RBG values, or excuse me, RGB, Green Bay, I always mess that up. And I'm just gonna use the same shadow color in fact, I'm way too lazy to type this, so I'm just going to go ahead and paste that right there. And actually, for my spread, and I probably don't want to use 10, 10, 10 because that's a lot for some text. So just use something like 3 pixels, 3 pixels, and give it a blur of 5. Now, whenever we do this and save it and refresh, we can see that we got a nice shadow on our text. So if you ever want to apply a shadow to a text and you don't want to do it through Photoshop and images, you want to make text that you can highlight still because then you can copy and paste it and everything. This is how you do it. So it's a little bit different from the box shadow in the sense that you got to make sure that your fade isn't so much and also you don't use the WebKit. It can be confusing because you use it on one shadow but not the other but hey that's the way it is don't blame me. So now what I want to do is I want to talk to you guys about gradients. So up until this point we use this I'm just going to change the gradient of this background right here. We use the same plain Jane solid color orange red yellow however that's getting kind of boring so wouldn't it be cool if we could change this color to make it fade into one another so what we want to do is we want to get rid of this background because orange see you later we're done with you what we want to do add however is a new background so background and there's a couple different ones that you can add and they all belong in the WebKit or they're all part of the WebKit, however you say. The first gradient I want to talk to you about is a linear gradient. A lin ear gradient. And it's kind of set up weird because, uh, let me see how to explain this. It takes three values in the parameter. The first value is your starting position. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be giving it two colors. Say we're going to be giving it a black and white. Well, it's going to say, okay, do you want me to fade it this way or this way or at an angle? Where do you want me to start? So we're just going to say, okay, the first color, we want you to start at the top. The, se the second value is the color, and I'm just going to make this black and white really simple. I'm not going to spice this up a bit. So what we're going to say is this. We're going to give you black and white, start with black, end with white, and start at the top. Simple enough. So now if we refresh this, we see that we get a nice black to white gradient starting at the top. Now the values for this are top, bottom, I don't even know if left and right, but uh, I do know that you can have like degrees, and if you want to have it fade at an angle, you put something like 4, 5, and DEG stands for degrees. So now we should get a nice 45 degree angle, just like that. So that is pretty much how you can use a linear gradient. However, they also have radial gradients. R-A-D-I-A-L. Rad or ray dial. I don't know. I just do that. I just split my words. Uh, I don't know. Just to amuse myself. So anyways, obviously we can't use these same parameters because what you need to fit in a circle doesn't use the same properties as a straight line. So the very first thing you write is where you want to start, and we want to start in the center. The next property is what shape do you want it? We want this gradient to look like a circle. And we're saying, okay, isn't all radial circles? Well, you can also have ellipse in here, and that's, that's kind of like a stretched out circle. So you can also have that as well. Now, the next thing you write is it's going to take two more things. However, they're like kind of in two parts, and I know this is really weird. <laughs> this is going to look weird whenever I do this, but I'm just going to go ahead and type it and get it over with. Red, 0%, and I'll fade it to like orange, and let me just put this at like 50% or something. That should be good. So it takes four parameters, but parameter three and parameter four are kind of two parters. So I know this is a really weird uh, thing, but hey, if you want to work with the radial gradients, this is the price you pay. So, whoa, hello. Let me go ahead and save that and refresh and see what we got. What we have is something starting in the center, 
fades out in a perfect circle and turns from red to orange. So you see that center, circle, red, orange, and these numbers right here are basically where you want the fade, the fade to begin. So at zero percent, we mean start fading as soon as you, you know, pretty much start making the color. If we put like 20% or something, then this middle 20% would be solid red. So since we put 0%, that's where we said where you want the fade to begin. And of course, 50 cent or <laughs> 50 cent, 50% 50 is the orange, so it starts fading at about 50%, right like that. So I know it's kind of a weird setup, like I said, but there you go. That's what you need to do. And the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is this I want to explain another version that we can write colors they used it they incorporated it not now it's called alpha and let me see what can we apply this to the text might be kind of hard to see with that shadow or excuse me that gradient right there so you know how the shadow is kind of opaque and it kind of fades off you're saying okay that shadow doesn't really look realistic it looks too dark if we could apply an alpha value to this that would be amazing now another word for alpha is transparency how transparent is it or in other words how much can you see through it so you don't use the RGB values for this anymore what you do is you use a new value called RGBA now it's gonna take your three RGB values red green and blue however it's gonna take a fourth additional value and that's the alpha value now I'm just gonna put 0.7 in there and the only thing that you remember is the less it is the lighter your shadow is gonna be so let me go ahead and save this and as you can see my shadow lightened up quite a bit because it was one by default and whenever we put it to 0 0.7 we could see through it more it's more transparent and if we had something really light like 0.3 I don't know if you guys are even going to be able to see this but that would be really light where you can almost see completely through in zero of course means that it isn't even there so I like mine around 0.6 because then it gives you a nice realistic shadow look it isn't so dark where it looks like whoa what is this like shining in a flashlight directly on it we want to give it a nice subtle popping out look and I think that yeah that's it for this tutorial this website is looking pretty good we have a nice sunfire oh my god WTF barbecue and a nice subtle shadow I think this is uh, good to package up and sell the web development companies. So anyways, that's all I got for you guys for this tutorial. I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you. And again, I want to stress one more time. I know these are really weird setups right now, but it's not CSS3's fault. It's They didn't standardize everything yet. So all these like web kits are going to go away soon. So it's going to get easier, I promise. And in the next tutorial, we got some more stuff to cover with CSS3. And I'm going to begin to make some awesome looking websites. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.